Divorce is no joke, which is probably why Lois is still with Peter. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons why Lois Griffin should divorce Peter. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the worst things Peter has done to Lois, their children, or just in general, that would prompt any real-world woman to make a call to a divorce lawyer. Happiness isn't about buying expensive things, it's about being together. Number 10. His drinking problem has made her codependent. One of Peter's most dominant traits is his drinking. <laughs> He hangs out at the drunken clam with his friends all the time, and he works at a brewery. Peter has a very intimate relationship with alcohol. He frequently gets too drunk to function, and Lois has to take care of him. The very first episode of the show is based on Peter getting too drunk at a stag party after promising Lois he won't drink. Promise me, Peter. Lois, honey, I promise not a drop of alcohol is gonna touch these lips tonight. He even engages in the ever so clever drinking game, Drink the Beer. <laughs> you win! All right, what do I win? Another beer! Oh, I'm going for the high score. Peter never shows any serious signs of getting help for his drinking, or even just cutting back on it. All right, I'm going to work. Somebody's gotta put food on this table. Number 9. He turned his family into drug dealers. These days, everyone needs a side hustle, but perhaps turning your family into drug dealers when your farming gig doesn't work out is not the best option. When crime rises in Quahog, Peter uproots his entire family with no warning and moves them to a farm to live the rural life. Here we are, everyone, the Griffin family farm. But life on the farm is not as easy as it seems. They discover a meth lab in the basement of the farm, and Peter convinces them to start dealing to earn money. I don't know. I Lois, we've always given our family whatever it needs. Well, right now, our family needs us to sell illegal drugs to the tank top community. Of course, eventually, the Griffins give up the drug life and move back to Quahog, but things get a lot worse before they get better. Lois should have run and taken the kids with her. Well, what about this farm? And this house? And the lab inside the house, which is currently producing an incredibly volatile and explosive batch of thermoreactive Number 8. He compared her body to aging, broken-down equipment. Peter puts Lois down all the time, but this time, it seemed way more insensitive than his usual comments. What were once two firm, impressive mountain peaks have become a barren, strip-mined, muddy landslide that droops ever downward. First of all, it was her birthday. Secondly, it was during a surprise party in front of all her friends. And third, it was a time when she was already feeling insecure about getting older. Uh, somebody have a birthday coming up this week? Oh, that's nice of you to remember, Brian, but frankly, I'd rather let this one slip by. I don't need to be reminded how old I'm getting. Way to kick her while she's down, Peter. Lois insults Peter all the time, too, but when he refers to her as a plow horse, whose only use is menial labor and sex, can you really blame her? Lois, you may not be the young filly you were when I met you, but you're still my reliable old plow horse who's there each day to pull the plow, to help around the barn, and let the husband horse slap a back chatter now and then. This speech sent her on a midlife crisis. As far as we're concerned, it should have sent her running for the hills. Jeez, what the hell's her problem? Peter, she was already feeling insecure about her age, and then you went and gave her that horrible speech. Number seven, he accidentally threw hot grease at her face. Peter has gotten away with a lot of bad behavior due to his stupidity, but when he's deemed mentally challenged, he takes this to a whole other level. Oh my god! I could get away with anything! He takes full advantage of the situation by starting a Bible fight in church, barging into women's bathrooms, and causing trouble wherever he goes, while blaming it all on being mentally challenged. Done! Peter! What? I don't know any better. His worst offense is when he jumps behind the counter at a fast food restaurant and accidentally pours hot grease all over Lois, nearly killing her. I am so taking this. <laughs> and this isn't even the only time Peter has almost killed Lois, but more on that later. Oh, God, what have I done? I'm the worst husband ever. Number six, he brought plagues on his family. One of Peter's most ridiculous offenses against his family happened quite early on in the show. In a season two episode, Peter claims that Chris is deathly sick in order to get his favorite TV show back on the air, and then claims that he miraculously cured him. Chris is all better. I cured him. You cured him? That's right. I have divine powers. As if that weren't selfish enough, when his neighbors start praising him like a god after the supposed miracle, Peter revels in the attention. This leads to the plagues descending on his family. 
As Brian puts it, God is pissed. Oh, there's gotta be an explanation for all this. You want an explanation? God is pissed. Despite everyone demanding he tell the truth, Peter refuses to until Chris almost dies. This probably should have been a massive red flag for Lois. Thank God. I mean, thank me. Ah, ah, kidding. Yeah, it's a joke. It was a joke. Number five, he's constantly committing crimes. Peter turning his family into drug dealers was pretty bad, but Lois probably didn't even find it that surprising considering breaking the law is kind of his thing. All right, everybody, this is it. Hey, where the hell is everybody? Crimes Peter has committed range from minor offenses of robbery and breaking and entering to straight up murder. And there was the time he committed treason by creating his own country and going to war against the US. Dad, I tried to go to school, but this guy won't let me. Oh yeah, him and what army? The US army. Oh, that's a good army. There was the murder of a completely innocent hook-handed war hero and the manslaughter of his mom's best friend. Although, in Peter's defense, that last one was an accident. It looks like somebody's mom died or, or something. I don't know. You, you, this, you, you'll take care of this, right? Number four, he forced her to gain so much weight that she had a heart attack. You might think that Peter, of all people, would be understanding when Lois started to gain weight, but you would be wrong. Uh, oh, hold on a sec. All right, bring her through. He ruthlessly insults her, at least until he discovers the wonders of fat sex. Then he encourages her to gain weight, which, if you can imagine, is even worse than him putting her down. He insists she get fatter and literally stuffs her face with cake. I want you bigger. I want you fatter. It will please me. She gains so much weight that she has a heart attack and almost dies. But that does not stop Peter from having sex with her. No, no, Peter, I'm really having a heart attack. Um, oh my God, you serious? Oh, we should get you to the hospital. All right, all right hold, hold on a sec. All right, I'm almost done, almost done, almost Peter! done. Peter! Almost done, almost done, almost done, almost done. Okay, let's go. And this is still only one of several times Lois has almost died by Peter's hand. What did you do with my mom's fat? Oh, it's right here in the storage closet. Number three, he's an abusive and neglectful father. If the way Peter treats Lois isn't enough to have her pack in her bags, the way he treats their children probably should. We get it. A big part of the show's humor is how the ridiculous and dysfunctional Griffins interact with one another, but the way Peter treats his children is just appalling. She at home. But, Dad. Trust me, Chris, sometimes it's better not to fit in. He frequently makes Chris feel insecure about himself. He got Stewie hooked on steroids that one time. Well, if there's anyone I can trust, it's a stranger at the gym holding a dirty needle. Here, Stewie, try this. Yeah, what the hell are you do? Woo! Oh my! And of course, there was the time he threw an unconscious, severely injured Stewie underneath the wheels of Lois's car, so she would think that she was the one who injured him. Oh my god! Stewie! And he hits Meg with a baseball bat. Need we say more? I heard a noise. Is somebody downstairs? Ah! Oh god, Meg, you startled me. I'm sorry. Number two, he tried to shoot her. After finding out that Lois is Jewish, Peter tries to shoot her. So he's not only guilty of attempted murder of his own wife, but also an anti-Semitic hate crime. If I don't rid the house of this Jewish curse, this family is gonna go to hell, and I won't let that happen. Now that's a loving husband, right? Yeesh. As Lois is walking out to the mailbox to get the mail, Peter watches her through the scope of a rifle and takes a shot at her. Ah, what the hell? Mm. Lois freaks out, as you might expect, but Peter is so nonchalant about the whole thing. Seriously, how many times does Peter have to try to kill Lois before she calls it quits? Relax, Lois, I was aiming for the mailbox, I'm just trying to make a point. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Peter, what the hell? Joe, Joe, get inside, the blades oh are still God, spinning. Peter, get, what is that thing? I just hate being around the kids. What? Six. Five. Sorry, I just thought I'd be honest since we're gonna die. Number one, he tried to drown her. That's right, yet another near murder. Maybe Lois should take solace in the fact that Peter was trying to connect more with Stewie when they almost killed her. It's time that you take an interest in your son. Starting today, I want you to spend more time with Stewie. After realizing that the only thing they have in common is that they find Lois's pain funny, Peter and Stewie go on a rampage, abusing her. They smash a jar of pickles on her head, assault her with a spraying garden hose, and trap her in the trunk of the car and sink her in a lake. You know, just some good old-fashioned father-son bonding. Hey, Drippy, you're back. What's for dinner? Peter, when I said bond with Stewie, this is not what I had in mind. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.